Hey, what's up? This is the first uh, tutorial of uh, Jared Graphics. So we're going to make it so it's not so hard. Uh, so let's jump right into Photoshop and get working. I'm going to open up Photoshop. If you're not familiar with Photoshop and your first time with Photoshop, there's a lot to it, this program. So uh, a little bit at a time, and then um, <clears throat> you'll get more and more used to it. A lot of people in tutorials, they'll like tell you exactly what all these buttons are and like what all of these selections are, but I'm not really going to worry about that too much. We're going to do a simple composite, um, then I'll mix in maybe some um, medium type stuff just to give you an idea of what you're going, like, just to give you an idea of like looking forward and whatnot. So let's uh, get cracking here. We're going to go into File. And I'm going to explain this as much as possible, but um, usually you would go into New if you're creating one, and we'll pop this open and see. And you can do a lot of different stuff. You can, you know, use paper, photos, or anything like that. But for compositing, and we usually have a backplate, and that's going to be the size of your video, uh, of your photo. So I've already went and did all this stuff, and you'll be able to see the descriptions, like the link descriptions, and You'll be able to see the link in the link description, excuse me. So um, let's go. Let's open up some images. So I have these images here. I have a car, I have city, I have sky, I have another like buildings of a city. Chicago actually is where I'm from. Right now I'm living in Austin. And then I already have a PSD that has drive. I was I already filmed this uh, tutorial, and then I was using whatever screenshot software I was using, like was corrupted. So now I have to redo it. So I'm doing all this stuff in real time, just so you and trying to explain it as much as I possibly can. If you have any questions afterwards, feel free to comment or uh, send me an email at jaredgraphics@gmail.com. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and um, we can go ahead and open and put all of these in here. And so we'll just do that. And it will load if my computer allows it to. Alright, so while that's loading, we'll just wait here. I'll make sure this is still recording. Yeah. Cool. Uh, now I'm kind of paranoid, making sure everything is recording. And that's still recording. Hmm. All right, so here we go. This is your backplate. This is what we're going to composite in. We're kind of doing like a a car ad. So I mean, if you're wanting to like do like a Lexus ad for like a magazine or like a billboard, this is the way to do it. Um, where I got the images, you can get your own images, but um, if you want to do the quick way, how I got all the images. Is, uh, oh, uh oh. My computer is being kind of slow right now, probably because I have two sources of video working. Uh, hopefully it's going to load back to what I was searching. And I don't think it is. Worst. Threat has been detected. Threat has been detected. Alright. Threat has been detected. We'll go to Google. Um, when you're practicing and learning, uh, Google Images is a, a good where place to start. Uh, so, I actually have where I got the images at. So the car I got here in Google Images. So I can just plug that in. I had all this stuff up, but apparently it's just not. Uh, air. Uh, 
Hmm. Try it again. Not nah, I'll just research the images. Well, my computer's being stupid, so I'll research. I'll reach the images again. So I got this image. I just typed in cars here, and then it went to images, and then this search tool here, and then I went large. Um, car. Bear with me. Um, great, now I can't find anything. Uh, anyway, uh, so I put the, <clears throat> I got went to Google Images and then I went to Flickr. Uh, for some reason, my computer's being stupid, but I'll have those links for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So I got this Lexus here. Uh, I always try to name just for, and I always duplicate. I should probably explain that, huh? All right, so you go, we click here, and then you go here, and then you go to duplicate layer. So there we go. So it's duplicated, and then we're going to go into here. Like I said, all these tools do certain things, uh, and then you can hold down the tools and get different different options. We're going to go through all those options here in later videos, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and use the magic wand tool. And then the magic wand tool, how you <clears throat> how you get the area or the surface area of what you're trying to cut out is this tolerance right here. Right now we're set at 15, so we're going to go ahead and click it. And 15 is kind of what we want. Um, let's go ahead and knock it down to 10. And 10 is going to be what we really want. So once it's selected, you just hit delete or backspace, and it's gone. And then we're going to go ahead and do this for the same thing here. That looks about right. We'll go ahead and do 10, um, do 15. That's looking better. And go ahead and just delete that stuff. Now there's a little bit of, there's going to be a little bit of stuff we'll have to get in later. So we went ahead and did that. I just did the same thing with the whole deleting thing and then also this background here so here we go we got the image up in place and we are rolling now we're going to take this eraser tool here um, like again you can do here and you have like background eraser tool I usually just use the eraser tool and then I go up to here to brushes and um, this is your hardness and softness. You know, the softer you want, the harder you want. Obviously, this is going to be the softest brush here. And then it's going to go into the hard brushes. So you go here, hard, a little softer. And then your size, however size you want your brush, you can either do it there or you can use these uh, bracket keys here and go, go, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we get rid of this stuff. Mm. Oh, and uh, when you uh, make a mistake, you can just go Control Z, 
and uh, it'll go back for you. And I'll have all these buttons on the dis in the description. So we're going to go ahead and take out what we can. And there we go. There we go. A lot of people like to use the feathering tool. I'm not a big fan of the feathering tool. Um, I feather with the I feather with the eraser brush. I just think it's uber better. And you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. And if you mess up, like feathering, it, it doesn't do really what I usually like it to do. And when you do advanced composites, feathering kind of sucks. No, but some people like it. Uh, that's the one thing you'll find out with Photoshop. That tons of people do things differently. So what works for me may not work for you. So we're going to go ahead and um, this is all cut out. And we're going to go ahead and take this move tool here. And we're going to move it. How I got it to there. i got to explain stuff better. All right, how I got it here is I just select it and then pulled it, so there we go, and plop it in. Now it's small. We Remember, we did the large images, so we can move that up. So let's take this. I always keep everything just in case I need to go back for some reason. I try not to have to go back, but uh, sometimes you just have to go back. Okay, so here is the car, and then we have our background. Background, I still want to duplicate it just in case. Like here, we're not really messing around with the background too much. I may take this and make it the sky appear because I don't really like the washed out white. But um, we can we can do that later. So here we go. Here is the car, and we're gonna go Control T. And how we do this is simple. So we do Control T. And then instead of like, cause this will like mess it up and stuff like that, um, just dragging it. So we don't want to do that. So you hit shift and then you drag it out and you hold down shift and drag it out. That way it stays the uh, same. And then we want to make it a little bigger than that stuff because we are further we are closer to the camera if this was the camera if this was the camera here that's what that kind of means and then we're going to go ahead and apply it and there we go we got our car in the scene if you want to move it around a little bit you can use the arrow keys on your keypad and move it around um, move it up I'm liking it like right here that's just my personal preference so there we are. So it's pretty, it's cut out. It's looking pretty good uh, for a, a beginner composite. You know, it looks good. The car doesn't really fit the scene yet. And we're going to kind of fix that up a little bit. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's, it's looking decent. Um, when we did the white, on the back, we kind of cut out the windshield. I'm going to replace the windshield, and that's going to be more of a more of an advanced tutorial. But it's I'm still going to do it for you guys. So, uh, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. So let's. I'm going to take this background out because I don't like it. So I'm going to select this background layer, not the one that we took off, but I'm going to select the background layer. And uh, if you guys have any like things that you want extra in this, like we can add more cars, we can add a lot of stuff to this scene to make it even better. People, um, <clears throat> you want like, the buildings to explode or whatever like that, more advanced tutorials, um, I'm more than happy to help you out with that. So just leave a comment down in the comment section. And um, <clears throat> we'll just uh, go through it through a basis. I'll show you guys whatever you guys want to know. So 
um, city in ruins with a nice car. But right now we're just going to keep it basic. Keep it, keep it basic. So we're going to go ahead and get the wand tool again. And I'm going to select here. That's looking uh, a little not, you see the buildings are kind of cut off and stuff like that. So we're going to go to the tolerance once again. This becomes your friend when you are compositing. And it's still not a great, uh, I believe when I did it the first time I went to one and it looked pretty good. And one looks great. So we're going to go ahead and take that out. Boom. Just like that. So I went ahead and I got a sky background. So we're going to go ahead and import that sky background in. And the same way we imported the car. You see that the background is not all, it's not in the back. You know, the sky should be further back. Um, oops, 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 oops. Go back. And this is because of the layers here. Uh, when you put it up like this, boom, it'll, it'll, Boom, it'll go, when you put it down like this, excuse me, it'll go back. And then we're going to want to mess around with the image just to make it look realistic. So we're going to mess around with it. That looks good. We're going to keep it like that and just like we did with the car. So here we go, we have um, a little scene going on, which is cool. I'm going to take the eraser tool and kind of get some of these spots a little better. Um. All right, so that's looking decent. There's a few little things I need to. All right, so there we go. Now it doesn't really fit. Like the colors aren't really fitting that well. So what we're going to do here is kind of change it up a little bit. Um, the best way to do this for time being, either you can go into images and you can go into adjustments, and then there's your colors. Uh, I don't really use levels very often. It's just dark and light. I really use curves a lot. But we can also go into here too. We're gonna to go into here first. This over here is for like one image, separate image, and this is for pretty much the whole layer. So you go into this and you have this line that you can manipulate. So you can make it brighter, you can make it darker, and we're gonna make it a little darker. We're gonna make it kind of pop a little bit more. And I'm going to make it somewhat like that. It looks good. I mean, you can make it really dark. You can, you can do whatever you want. You can really bust it out. But I like that. So we're going to keep that. And the car is kind of is pretty much fitting in to the scene. Uh, the nice thing about the white car is it kind of already fits in the scene and it's pretty well lit. The background, however, is not really fitting in the scene too much. So we're going to exit out of this and be good for right now. And you see the curves here. So it was bright and now it's a little darker, a little more contrasty. So we're going to go ahead and select the sky, label sky. If you're doing this part, if you're not doing this part, you know, just can watch. And um, so we're going to go into images and adjustments. 
and then we're going to go into curves. And here's the same, you know, the same deal. I mean, there's a little bit, it's the same thing. If you don't really, you want the Photoshop to auto adjust it, you can, you can do that. You can also go in here and there's like color negatives and darker and I mean, you can hit that and it'll just make things different, you know, negative. But I always do custom because you get really, uh, Cancel that. Go back into it. I always do custom just because I like to do things myself. So we'll do the same thing. And you always kind of want to do like an S shape. And I kind of like it blown out a little bit because it was blown out before. Kind of like it blown out a little bit. You just kind of play around with it till it meets something that you that you like and you know something like that looks pretty good we'll keep it like that and then uh, you can change those colors and stuff like that you can change that we'll do that later so okay so here we go we got a nice <clears throat> cool like car and image. Um, the next step is going to be a little bit more in depth. And actually, I just noticed that right here is kind of cut off a little bit. Let's go into uh, the background image again. Let's take this out. See that? So what we're going to do is... Uh, we are going to, this is going to be a little bit more advanced. We're going to go, this lasso here, this like rope thing, and then you go here and we're going to go magnetic lasso. And then we're going to just draw this out like so. That's the nice thing about Photoshop is if you mess up and you still have the image, the original image, it'll so we'll copy that, bring this stuff in, and we'll take this rectangular marquee tool and then we'll just do that and then we'll go paste and we're just trying to make it look better and then we're just going to Okay, so we, that's what we have, and we have this tip right here that we're going to get rid of, and we're just going to do just erase it. That building looks way better. So what I essentially did is I selected it with the magnetic the magnetic tool and uh, cut it, cut around it and paste it into place and then used the eraser tool and <clears throat> use the eraser tool and just like blended it into the scene. So it looks really good now. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is another kind of advanced kind of thing to make this scene more lively. 
we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. Use our zoom. I like to use that instead of the other. And actually, we could probably make it to 20. OK, so we're zoomed in, and we are looking pretty good. Uh, we want to do this, and we go on the top building. OK. So what we're going to do is make a windshield. Um, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, so we're going to select white, which we already have our white color picker. And then we're going to go ahead and use this rectangular tool. And if you want other shapes, there's other shapes here. So the rectangular tool. And then we're going to go ahead and with this cursor, draw out the rectangle. And it'll pop up. If Don't worry if you pop up and it's like this and you're like, oh, I can't see it. It's because your layer isn't up top. Put it all the way up top and you'll be good to go. And then rasterize, which is uh, when you make stuff like shapes and stuff like that in Photoshop, it's like a vector. So you can manipulate it and make it huge, make it small, and it's not going to lose any resolution. Once you do that and once you're like set to the place that we are, you go ahead and rasterize. Go ahead and rasterize it. So we're going to name this wind s winds <laughs> whatever 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 you want to name it. Um, so yeah. So here we go. Is our white box. Now we're going to go to Control and T, and then we have the lines again. But we're going to do something different. We're going to um, the left of your mouse key or mouse pad. And there's a bunch of different options here to store perspective. We're going to go ahead and choose warp. And then now we're going to move the corners and everything into place. Don't worry if you go over, you can always erase and cut and, and uh, make things, you know, blend better. But for the time being, yeah, we're just going to do this pretty quick. So just keep them in the corners and do, 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 This stuff's so much fun to do. Like, it'll, you'll, it'll get easier and you'll be able to, like, create so much awesome stuff. All right, we're getting pretty, I'm pretty picky about my, about my work. So try to be as diligent as possible or I just, you know, try to be as detailed as possible and Atten paying attention to detail is a major a major thing when you work on stuff like this and then you can just change it around if you don't like a spot just like what I did all right go ahead and hit apply so here is our white Gonna be windshield. Only thing, only thing you have to do left is go to the opacity over here and change the opacity. Look at that; it's becoming to look like a windshield. And there we are. We've got a windshield, and you can you know, move it out a little bit to make it. And then you can take this tool, and if you need to, like, move stuff. There we are. We've got a windshield now. So what I did is I just put the opacity to 39%, whatever <coughs> thickness of uh, glass you want, I guess. And, However, 
I think that looks good. Go ahead and go to 10. And here we are. We've got, look how different that looks, though. Look, look at like that to that. It looks so much better when there's a windshield. And then, I mean, so then we did that, and you can look at your work and be like, oh, okay. And then did that, car's gone, that windshield's still there, and that. And then we had that, now it's that. So we did a quite a bit of work so far. The next thing to do is there's other, it's a city, so there's other buildings, there's gonna be glare. So that's the next thing. You can either take it or leave it, but <clears throat> it's really missing that element of of realism. So we're gonna go ahead and go here and duplicate this because I always duplicate, and then we'll put we'll make this Chicago. All right, so here's Chicago, beautiful. So we already had a one tolerance. We're not gonna want that. We'll probably do it at 15, and no. Let's go with 30. No. Let's go with 40. You just kind of have to feel it. Uh, we'll do 50. And then 50 is too much. So we'll stay at 40. And that's kind of how you have to play, play with it. And 40 is too much. Go back to 20. I must have been clicking something else. All right, so we're just gonna I'm just gonna do this real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're not using all of it. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and you have to select this tool. You have to put the move tool. Otherwise, you have it like this. You're gonna keep continue to do that. So you don't want to do that. So have the move tool, and then we move it. So now we have a city in our little story or little photo. Um, what we're going to have to do is control T again, and we're going to have to flip this. So vertical flip, because it's going to be this way. And that's when photography really helps out. And if you don't know, really, um, like when you're compositing something, you don't really know uh, how it's going to, like if it's a reflection or something like that, then go ahead and, you know, go out with a camera and take a picture of something and see what the reflection's like. So you can, uh, can be like, I'm saying that the city buildings are going to be here and the light's coming down this way, so it's going to make it flip. So anyway, and it's going to be distorted too, but I'm going to go ahead and change the opacity to make it so I can figure out like where it's coming from. And I'm probably just going to do it like right here. I mean, you can do it however you like. This is kind of like a personal preference thing. I'm going to start here. Go ahead and apply. And uh, make it so I can see it. Bring this up and then we're just going to... Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because shadows aren't perfect. Here we go. That's looking pretty good. Bring it down. There we are. Bring it down some more. And To make it more real, you can take this and go here and go distort because the shadow is going to be a little distorted. It's not going to be. 
Oh, it's reflection, rather. It's reflection, not a shadow. So we'll do that. That's looking pretty good. So there we go. Um, this is a scene. If you like the shit, if you like the reflection there, then keep it. I would put it not like this, because that looks unrealistic. I would put it like, even that. Just super, super, super subtle. Um, reflection on the white car. And you can actually move it up too if you want more reflection on the windshield as well. And just move it up. And then you can bring it something like that. It's really your preference. What, whatever you think your image will thrive for. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I know I did. And um, you, like I said, <clears throat> give comments, questions, concerns. Um, if you want to learn something that you um, always like wanted to like composite some type of photo, or always just wanted to learn like some type of Photoshop thing, whether it's typography, logo design, which logo design you're gonna do more in um, Illustrator, which I will have some Illustrator stuff as well. But um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a lot, and um, please subscribe and. <clears throat> If you have any questions, comment uh, jerrygraphics at gmail.com and follow me on Facebook. At, you know, just look up Jared Graphics on Facebook and follow me there with my fan page. And <clears throat> just keep in touch. 